reading that I'm going to come out from this morning is going to be from the book of Matthew 9, 35 and 38. I think it's awesome as you're looking for this. And we're also going to go to Matthew 28 from verse 16 to 19. So we're going to read Matthew 9, 35 and 38, those verses. And then we're going to go to Matthew 28, 16 and 19. But I was amazed this morning, Bishop, because the Bible study for today mm. was specifically built yeah. and geared, and some of the things that I'm going to share about the morning yeah. yeah. at the leading of the, of the Bible study this morning spoke on discipleship. Mm -hmm. And so all of you who were on this Bible study this morning, you're, you, you should be full and, and have a little bit of knowledge of what God expects from us, mm -hmm. how to become his disciples. Amen? Mm -hmm. Because like he said in the Bible study, we are not called, uh, the, the God that only called the pastor or, or the, the, the bishops or the evangelists or the, the, the he called all of us. Mm -hmm. We all got a responsibility, mm -hmm. amen, mm -hmm. to, 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 to seek the lost. Uh, because you and I once was lost. Amen. Lord, right? Amen. 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 Somebody found you through Jesus. Amen. Somebody ministered to you. Pastor Lucas said, My mother prayed for me. Amen. And what our parents did for us. I can speak of what my mother prayed for me. All right. I, I miss my mother. My mother was my greatest cheerleader. Every Sunday I started preaching, I went to see her. My mother used to say, Preach with power. She was a good person. Power. Amen. So if you would turn your Bibles with me to these scriptures and let us go to Matthew chapter 9 verse and those two verses. Would you stand to your feet for the reading of God's word, please? Verse 35 through 38, right? Yes. It reads, And when Jesus went about all the cities and villages, yes. teaching in their synagogues, mm -hmm. and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, of, and healing every sickness and every disease amongst the people. But when he saw yeah. the multitude, yes. Imagine a multitude greater than what we have in here today. Yeah. The Bible says he was moved with compassion mm -hmm. on them because they were faint and were scattered abroad as a sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest Truly is plenteous, mm -hmm. but the laborers, I said the laborers, are few. Yeah. He said, pray ye, therefore, the Lord of the harvest, yeah. who is Jesus, yeah. that he will send right. for laborers right. into the harvest. Yeah. Matthew 28. And verses 16 through 28. I'm going to read verse 16. I could start at 19 and just tell you where to go because this is the, where God is commanding all of us. Because, you know, in Matthew chapter 9, we see where he, he, he was moved with compassion. He said, There are too many people I see there. They all have a shepherd, they're weary, they're faint. They stand in need. And I don't have too many laborers. Too many people say they love me. Too many people say that they are my disciples. But where is the works? Where is the works? Where is the labor? What are you doing? What are you showing? What are you doing towards the lost? Uh, but God. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain, hit this, where Jesus himself had appointed them to go. Jesus told his disciples, I want you to go to that mountain up there in Galilee. And Jesus came. And when they saw him, no, 
Verse 17 says, And when they saw him, mm -hmm. they did what? I want you to cry out. Read it with me. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. They worshipped him. When you come in the house, do you see Jesus? That's what we worship. But we don't worship to see ourselves. We to see who is in here. We glad to see. I'm truly happy to see you. But I came to worship Jesus. Amen, sister. Sister here is always telling us about and exalting us to worship the Lord. But people should have to tell us. I've said it time and time. Everybody says it. You should come ready to worship the God. Hallelujah. Has it been good to you? Yeah. was a good testimony. A powerful testimony of the goodness of God. He's good God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes. And Jesus came and he spoke unto them saying, all authority, not some, all authority has been given to me in heaven on our earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. I want you to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son. And you baptize them in the name of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them, he said, you got to teach them, you got to teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, he said, I am with you always, even to the very end of the world. Amen? You may be seated. I'm not going to pray, sister. Roll pray for me that God would hide me behind this cross. Amen? That he anoints my lips. Amen? And that you would be hearers and receptive hearts, receptive spirits, to hear the word and receive it with gladness. And not only be hearers, but let us be doers. That's the key. Because we can hear all day long. And like we know, we know there's good teaching and good teaching and good teaching. But we got to be doers because in there is the obedience and then there is the blessing. Amen. If I don't say nothing, I'm saying it's a mouthful right there. It says, uh, so in Matthew chapter 9, Jesus went about, he taught him, he told him what to do. I read the scriptures to you. My question is, and it's a rhetorical, how, and I want you to think about it though, how compassionate are you? How compassionate are you? Only you know that. Only you can examine yourself and be honest. Said honesty is the best policy. God is truth. You gotta be truthful. If you're not a compassionate person, that's okay. Say, Lord, make me a compassionate person. Because if He calls us. He will equip us. Yes. He will give us those yes. things that we are short of. Amen? Amen. And a question I have is how merciful are you? The Bible said, listen, when Jesus saw them, he felt compassion. Do you feel compassion when you walk around, drive around? When the incident that happened, do you feel compassion for people? Let me tell you, when I'm driving around, I'm serious, people. I've been doing this not now for years. Because Jesus loved people. Jesus loved people. And he chooses ordinary people. Like just like you and me, who are willing to do just as he commanded. Glory to God. In Romans 9 and 5, Jesus said, it was said of Moses, for he said of Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion of whom. I will have compassion. Does it mean that Jesus is going to choose who he's going to have mercy on because he was saying, it is not for you. You just got to, you just got to be compassionate. You don't worry about who, I, who I'm compassionate on and if I'm compassionate on this one. And no, 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 because you really know me. If you really know me, I am a God of mercy and a God of compassion. There's no question about that. And that you can find it what he 
Israelites, what he told Moses and why in Exodus chapter 33 and verse 19. And I can't go through it all because of the sake of time. But in Luke 1, he also he said, and his mercy, Luke 1, 50, write it down, because you need to be like the barbarians to write down and go search the scripture. That will build you and strengthen you and me. Amen? Amen. He said, mercy, and his mercy is on them, yeah. on those that fear him. Amen. And he said, I will do this from generation to generation. Yeah. So it's not only to you, I'll be merciful, but I will go from your generation to their generation, and from generation yeah. to generation, yeah. says the Lord. Yeah. Because in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 says, But God, but God, yeah. who is rich in mercy, yeah. for his great love, I said love, yeah. when we, he loved us, oh, yeah. even when we ourselves were dead yeah. in sin, he quickened us together. Yes. Look at that word, together. Yeah. Yeah. He, didn't, he didn't just do us individually, but he has quickened us. Every time he quickens us, he joins us together, 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 because he blessed unity. Yes. We all here should be in unity in one accord. Yes. When we were dead and in sin, he had quickened us together with Christ. Yes. By grace, we have been saved. Because there's nothing good that we would have done, but by the grace of God. Amen. And guess what? And he has raised us together and made us sit together. This is a good piece here. In heavenly places with him. Amen? Amen. So it is not enough. Put it up there. It's not enough for me to preach mercy. Or tell you about mercy. And I don't have mercy. That's right. That's it's it's, it's yeah, a man. It is useless. Yeah, right. My talent. I think Pastor or Sister, I think Pastor alluded to, not alluded, but spoke of it that if people would know you, people, you know, you can write and witness to people, but they know they, they can recognize whether you're really truthful. If you're genuine or not, or you're just doing it because you're doing it because somebody told you to go. You gotta have mercy. Yeah. Compassion has to prompt you. Compassion has to find out you and move you and move me. The Bible said that we studied in the field last week, Matthew 5. Hallelujah. It said, Blessed. Bless. I want you to hear me. That's why I took off this so it won't be muffled. Yes. <laughs> Blessed are the merciful. Yes. For they shall obtain mercy. Yes. 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 This beatitude lesson that we study, I'm not gonna go through it. It's not a it's not a message of it's not a message of check and see. Which of these attitudes you possess? It's not a message of maybe you gonna see God because you're righteous and you gonna be blessed because you are merciful. Every single thing that's lined up in that beyonder too is a state of being that you and I need to be.
mind could cure disease. Yes. You see, Jesus was doing that before. Yes. Jesus was going about. He was the one who was healing and they were seeing Jesus do all these things, yes. right? Yes. Yes. But here in Luke chapter 9, it's when he sent out his 12 disciples. And he yes. gave them. Who gave them? Jesus gave them the power and the authority. Yes. Yes. Don't go out there without giving power or giving authority. You will be like the sons of Sceva. Then when they looked at them and said, Jesus, I know. I know Paul. But who are you? Who are you? And they left with their little behind out. Whip. They got whipped. Okay? So when you go out, you got to ensure. And that's why I was so honored. Really, I believe it was Wednesday night. And Pastor spoke about establishing a discipleship. Because we have to learn to disciple people. Amen. People that are not disciple cannot disciple anyone. Right. I was, and I had just mentioned that to someone early that afternoon. I was speaking wow. with someone. Amen. And I said, you know, I'm preparing this message and I'm here to tell you, but you know, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I want to go because I want to get to the meat of what ministry is discipleship is Amen. and these things so that we will get a little bit of an understanding here. Amen. I'm doing for me more of a teaching than a preaching anyway today. And it said then, he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said to them, take nothing with you for your journey. Amen. You know, I think I heard in the class this morning, he said, uh, freely you got, freely you give. Have you been saved? Did you pay to be saved? Did you get paid to be saved? Did you get paid for the gift that Jesus has given you? He said, oh, and don't take no purse, don't take nothing, don't even take a change of clothes. But he had to tell them not to take a change of clothes, no tunic. He said, because, you know what? If they had long journeys, you go from here to your house and you can't talk to nobody and tell them about Jesus. They traveled. And Jesus told them, don't take nothing. Go just with what you got. And I tell you why, because Jesus proved to them just like he did the Israelites. I am good enough to take care of you. I am big enough to make man provide for you. I am big enough to make it. Yes! Yes! He said, I am your provision. I'll go with you. Yes. And then, in fast forward to, uh, to Blue 10, guess what? The 70 people were sent. 70 disciples yes. were yes. sent. Did you see that increase yes. from 12? Yes. I want you to turn to it if you have the time, but you don't have to. The Bible says in verse 1, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others. Yes. How about that? And he sent them two by twos. I think I told it to you all one time. You go, you go two by two. I told you this ministry was not only for Keisha and Sister Lu, 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 because even in the in the gospel, there is no such thing as retirement. Ain't that right, Bishop? That's right. In God, in God's kid, in God's uh, in this Bible, we ain't talking about nobody retiring. Baby. Hallelujah. But I'm sure the bishop does the work. You see, no, we see him. He's still retired, but he's still preaching. He's still getting talk. He's really Yes! Yes! I'm telling you, there's no retirement when it comes to the kingdom. I'm looking forward to retiring myself. I'm like, Lord, I'm tired of this. But I'm here to tell you, I'm getting geared up for the kingdom of the world. The kingdom. Hallelujah! Yes! But anyway, 1 Peter 5. I mean, I'm sorry, 1 Peter 2. This is what he tells us. Therefore, not putting away lying, yes. all malice, yes. all deceit, all hypocrisy. Yes. 
That's First Peter two and one. Put aside envying and all evil speaking. Yeah. This is what he said. This is where you're gonna grow as newborn babies. He didn't say that you've been saved all along because he ain't talking to the one that are saved a long time. Because if you save a long time, you should have a lot of words. You should be designed to grow. You should have grown a whole lot of something. Because we have a tendency to see that they're still babies. And God is okay with the babies. He said, grow there in the word. Grow a desire the sincere milk of the word of God, which will help you to grow and strengthen you. When babies bring milk and when they're born, when babies born and come into the world, they begin to drink some milk and they gain strength. It is our right and our duties to train them yes, to become yes, disciples. Yes. I'm going to move on here. I've got to time is of the essence. I'm going to go here. Oh, I wanted to say this. This is what the Bible says. In this that I was telling you. It says in um, 1 Peter 2, right there, drop down to verse 18, it says, Servants, mm -hmm. servants, men, be submissive to your master with all fear, not only to them that do good, and they're so gentle and nice, but also to the harsh. Yes, yes. For this is commendable, it's because of good conscience. Towards God, one endures grief for suffering wrongly. For what credit is it if when you're beating for your real faults? You take it patiently. Have anybody ever got a whipping from their mother because you know you were wrong and you know you deserve it? And you took it because, well, I mean, I did it. I used to. If I didn't do it, then was a problem. But it anyway, said, because Christ suffered people. For us, leaving us an example that we should follow. Amen? And if Christ left us an example, Paul said in, in um, Philippians 3, Brethren, join in following my example and not those who walk as you have for a pattern. When you see, look at the pattern and follow those people that are following after God. So when the day of Pentecost mm -hmm. had fully come, yes. mm -hmm. the Bible says they were all in one accord. In one accord. Yes. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. Yes. The Bible said and suddenly there came of a sound yes. of a rushing mighty way. Yes. And suddenly yes. it the house where they were sitting. Then they appear unto them divided tongues of fire. I want you to hear me. And one sat on each and every one of them. And that could be you and I today. Because I'm here to tell you, I'm not here to talk too much about me, but I'm here to tell you, I can preach on this, I can preach on the entire book of Acts because I lived, I want you to know, I lived the book of Acts. When God saved me, he had to take me all the way to Europe. All the way to Europe. I was a church door, folks. I used to laugh at people speaking in tongues. I told many of people that invited me to the 
the church is going to take all that. Are you hearing me? You have to break it down, my little Well, since I'm from Missouri, and God knows I'm from Missouri, you didn't know that, did you? I'm from the show, he said, show me. I'm bad. Show me. I'm bad. Show me. No, I didn't say it like that to Jesus, but I was. Yes, 
The word needs to be preached. Conviction takes place and people move forward. That's my belief. That's what I learned in the church of God. I said, I, I, I was talking to Pastor, I told him, I praise God and Bishop. Can't you know this man of God, Pastor Russell Ward, which is the pastor of whom I was saved in Germany. That was a man of God like many others. Trust me, I know many others. Many! But I'm telling you, God had me sit under his tutelage. And I remember sitting there as a young believer in God and showing me things. Three years! Like he took Saul of Towers and sent him and blinded his little tail and I tell him, go sit down and learn. But you don't know me. You want me to crucify my people like you do it. If you really know me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh yes. I learned the ways of God by watching that pastor. Let you hear me. And his family. His wife. I'm telling you, his children. They were precious just like yours. Just like yours. They love God. They love God. Our children may grow and go astray, but they, you know, once we planted them the seed of the Lord and the knowledge of God, they ain't going too far. You all know that. You see that. They ain't going far at all. They ain't moving far. So I want to move quickly because I want to ask you all, what is evangelism? I'm going to tell you. The word evangelism comes from the Latin evangel, the Latin word. Evangelizare. And it's to spread the gospel. And with the root word in the Greek says, evangelizastai. See the difference in the language? Which is bring good news. Ministers are called to be agents of change. The early church devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, listen, to follow each the fellowship the breaking of bread as we did today and to prayer as the sister said we ought to pray the result is in this was the unity that they had in the spirit church I want us to listen they had a unity in the spirit thank you Dino bless you you will see you will receive a prophet's reward. Trust me, the Bible says that. Yeah, Who gives a prophet a glass of water will receive a prophet's reward. Yeah. Your reward is coming, bro. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Every Sunday in Germany, I want you to 
listen to me. It wasn't one Sunday, and maybe another 10 Sunday after, and maybe another 30 days after. Every Sunday, people was coming in there. That church got so filled. Because when we got saved, we went to the neighborhoods in our military, and people were telling people about it, and they saw the change, and people were coming. Believers today need to follow their example. Who did this example of the apostles and the disciples? Amen? Amen. And it says here, how can we do that? By living out certain biblical principles. Believers need to be kindly affectionate to one another. Amen. You find that in Romans 12. Believers need to honor others above themselves. It's right there in Romans 12. Believers should accept each person as important. Believers are called to serve in love. Believers should show hospitality openly and willingly. Those are five things. Amen? The Bible says this is key here. In Romans 12, the Bible, in the 10 says, be kindly affectionate. It says, 11 says, don't be slothful in business. Yeah. That doesn't mean your personal business. It means the business of God. Yeah. It says to be fervent in spirit. Yeah. You gotta be burned. Your spirit gotta be burning for the loss. Serving the Lord. Yeah. The Bible said rejoicing in hope. You know that there's hope for everyone. Like Patient in tribulation. Yeah. And continually, instantly in prayer. Yeah. Verse 13 says this. Distributing to the necessity of the saints. Yeah. That is our responsibility. Amen. That is the responsibility of the church. All of us, we are the church individually, corporately, whatever. We are to distribute to the necessity of the church. And I heard my brother-in-law said this morning, which is true. You know, we don't want to just give people because they hollow a need. Because some people come in to use the church. And we don't need to do that either. We need to be wise. We need to know, to know them and be deserving. Now everybody that's going to say, I need. Yeah. Now, we don't do that. I told the bishop, you know, I, I am a giver and I will give. But let me tell you, I don't give if I don't know to the need that I'm giving. Mm -hmm. I don't. When you give money to something you don't know, I know I don't. I hear everybody calling on TV. I know when I, I go when I'm yielded by the Spirit. You got your spirit at all. But in our church, we got to give to where the need is. What? They got to be a need. The word of God said, he that wants a friend will show himself friendly. Are you showing yourself friendly? Will you be a friend to someone and bring them to your home? You're witnessing out there. You meet somebody. Are you there to say, you know, come and meet me at my house Sunday. I don't have dinner. I'm going to invite you to dinner. Because you have a purpose and an aim. You got a purpose. Amen? You heard this morning, he said Jesus was a friend of sinners. The Bible says he loves sinners. He said, I didn't come for the righteous, but I came for the one that's sick. Is there any sick in this house today? Is there any sick around us today? Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Are you lost today? Are you realizing, Lord, I don't know you like I think I should. He's here today. I'm not serving you like I ought to. He's here. Because as the 
Church of God. He says many people come to church every Sunday, man. They ain't saved. You know that, Bishop. They ain't saved. Not because everybody's sitting here. I'm not saying you that are here. Do you know? Do you know? Don't fool yourself. But you can't fool God. You may fool us. Some of us. But we can't fool God. And I believe your desire is to be with Jesus. You come because you love us. You know something about Jesus. But Jesus wants you to come to know him. Amen. Amen. When you go to your hometowns, or to your country of birth, or wherever you're from, do you go to you go see your friends to show off? Just to impress them. To impress them? My God. To say, look at me now. Yeah, my word. Not the time for that. I'm a woman of the cloth. I think they said that. I'm a woman of the cloth. I'm a man of the cloth. Not to Jesus. Look what God has done to me. Or do you purpose in your heart? And you know that they're not saved. And you go to your target specifically with a purpose. And they are your target. They should be your target. To go and save the lost. When you go to your school reunions, you go in your pretty little dress, your nice suits, to show who your boo is. Uh-huh. <laughs> or do you go to really target them and take make the most of that time to tell them about Jesus? Or invite them and say, you know what? I'm in town because I when I go in town anywhere, I go to church. I know I find a church to go. I don't know about you all. Vacation don't mean no church for me. Amen. Amen. He does that, right? Vacation don't mean church. No church. I'm going to lay on the beach. I'd be like, where is the church? 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 Follow his example. Yeah. A disciple possesses a genuine concern for the loss. What does that mean to be called? A called person functions compellingly out of necessity. What do you think it means when it said necessity is the mother of all inventions? I remember when I was in high school and I was asked a question with the rest of the student. No one knew it. Little me, I just came from Panama, didn't speak a little English that good, but I got the revelation because it was a revelation to me. Amen. And everybody was impressed that I got the answer. Amen. Because they, they just, you know, so everybody wanted that. They thought, I doubt that girl is smart. Yeah. <laughs> but the problem, the, 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 the team here is being, there is always a need for salvation. Amen. Amen. There is always a need for people to be saved. Yeah. Necessity is the mother of it. We don't invent anything, but we still need for people to be saved. We must find ways through the word to minister to mankind their needs for salvation. That will bring them to repentance. God is looking for what? Obedient and committed servants. There are three primary reasons believers come together in a setting like this to worship. Number one is to exalt God. The more believers exalt God, the more he puts their struggles and issues in the proper perspective. In other words, we kind of forget about ourselves. We forget about the struggles. If you exalt in God. Amen. Believers number two are called to edify believers. As I said, Bishop killed me. I'm sure he edifies us still. We are to edify one another, the Bible says. Amen. And so that we do, God wants to fortify us, to strengthen us, to strengthen each other. Amen. The objective of ministry is to move people from conversation to spiritual growth and this and discipleship. Evangel and the third is to evangelize the lost. And that's what we're trying to do.
talking about. There are still a number of people that are unconverted. That is why it's important to have the gift of the Holy Spirit Church. Because when they come in our churches, we need to have the spirit of discernment. That God can take a message and turn it around and gear it towards the need. He knows the spirit of God knows the need of the people. We, you and I may think we know, but we don't know. But he knows. This is what I was saying. I heard just the other day on the radio, even though I hear my brother don't say, I listen to radio, I listen to all kinds of stuff. Barnard Institute conducted an analysis in which not 66 of the leaders consider themselves relativists. Meaning, there's no such thing as absolute truth. How many people have had people say to them, man wrote that Bible. That Bible is not truth. I know you do. But this is what it's saying. 66% of believers are relatives today. We see what's happening in our country. We see the mindset of church people must only worry about the world because we should be going to them. But church people, you're sitting here today and you have a little bit of something and I don't believe all that thing is true. Yeah, right. But I say this. This is what I said. I said, can you believe that? Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the way. And I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is absolute truth. Jesus said, none of you can come to the Father except you come by me. Not by Muhammad, not by Buddha, not by Catholic priests, not by nobody. You've got to come through Jesus. He is the truth. He is the life. He is the only way. The objective of evangelism is to give the church a mission. And the purpose of evangelism is to equip the church with a clear and defined strategy and a plan for fulfilling and reaching the loss of which our pastor is so getting ready to do. Amen? Amen. To define it clearly so we can understand it. We know the purpose. And we can go out and fulfill the mission. Amen? Amen. Our mission statement says to find someone who is hurting, lonely, desperate, and out of relationship with Christ. And bring that one home. And that home is to Christ. To put them back in relationship with Christ. And they come to the home. Amen? The goal of our church is to reach the least and the lost through evangelism, which is reaching out. And through discipleship, which is through teaching and leadership training, which we are about to praise God. Amen. Amen. In the book, I don't know if Pastor remember a bishop. There was a book, The Great Commission. Was called The Solution by B. Douglas Small. You know, God is good. I run around and we got that book. That book was written in 2009. I was given at one of the general assemblies. I believe I have one because the bishop, which is a, was a pastor then, Bishop William Kilby, had gone, there you go, Sister Keisha, bring that book, girl. And um, that book, that book, It's a perfect train for evangelism. Bishop, you remember giving us this book? Bishop Kilby. It's important to invest, I want you to listen, in literature for your people. But this was written by uh, P. Douglas. 
and it was given at the general assembly. They had a thing because they seen what the way the church was going, and they were like, "We gotta be more evangelistic. Yeah. We gotta take a more evangelistic attitude and form." Amen. Absolutely. This book here, and in this book, I wrote this on Matthew 28. The mandate was what Christians are commanded. What Christians have commanded you to do is not an option. When Christ said, go ye therefore, it was not an option. Okay, you go if you want to, and if you don't want to, and you don't go. It's not an option, it's a mandate. When he said, go ye therefore, it means everybody. It included everybody. The meditation in this book, in this particular thing, it says, the prayerful reflection of the mandate is meant to be prayed passively and passively read. You don't, you don't just read it and not pray about it. You know, God wants us to be passionate and not passive. We got to be passionate about the things of God. And the mission, the practical step to consider for serious Christians, that is, who wants their life to make a difference in the final harvest. Doing church as a team, in the book Doing Church as a Team, it says people are precious. They rank very high. Pastor gave us this book. They rank very high on God's ledger. And if we are called to be a people after God's own heart, they, they, people, need to rank pretty high yes. and ours as well. Hallelujah. We must rank people yes. and love people enough yes. that they are yes. important yes. to God. Yes. Yes. We must love them yes. with His love yes. Yes. and care for them with His compassion. Yes. Many of us know love in words yes. but in action we lack, if you're honest. I remember we had a study about, we were having a study, I forgot who was teaching, but there was a very long, lengthy thing about this agape love. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I left disturbed on that Bible study that day. Because we as believers don't know what is agape love of Christ, Bishop. How can we say we will never know what is the agape love of Christ? How can we say that? When God is love. And we are love just like He loved. He loved people unconditionally. Did you see that in His walk, in His life? He loved people unconditionally. I told my grandmother, and she may, she may say, but this morning I said, Destiny, how you come dressed looking like that? She said, Grandma, the Lord said, come you are. Oh, <laughs> and I said, but to him that knows and do, ought to do better. <laughs> I said, God, to him that knows and don't do anything. God said, come as you are. <laughs> but she's fine, you know. But I expect her to be in a dress and... You know, all that. But anyway, young people, we got to pray for our young people, Pat, Pat said today. They must be here to our heart and in our prayers. Amen? Amen. He says here, and I will say, we don't really know agape love, which is the love without condition. And I understand what agape love is. Well, we are not going to be good ambassadors for the kingdom of God. But we need to go back and renew our love. As it says in the book of Revelation 2, you have forgotten your first love. You have forgotten your first love. He said, listen, I know your works. I know how you labor. I know how you're patient. I know how you can't bear them that are evil. How many of you like that? I can't stand the people who are so evil. <laughs> And I know that those that try them, which say they're an apostle, we heard. Yeah. There are many that come in and they say they're this and they're that. Yeah. But they're not. It says it in the book of Revelation. Right. And you have found some of them to be liars. Yeah. And has borne with patience. 
But God said in verse 4, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you. Because you have left your first love. Remember from whence you have fallen, saith the Lord. And repent. And do your first works over. You need to go read it. If we don't know love, we don't have an altar these days, but there's an altar. Make an altar in your house. Make an altar where you sit. Make an altar anywhere. Let it be your altar to the Lord. Show me how to love. Give me love. Teach me how to love the unlovable. The unlikable. And I heard Sister Carlita comment today, but I already had it in here. I want to describe in uh, Mark chapter 12. And one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together, remember they were saying, look, he's sitting, and he, and he said, which is the greatest commandment? Which is the first, no, he said, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him and said, the first of all the commandments. Hear, O Israel. Hear, O silver spring. The Lord our God is one. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all your strength. He said, This is the first commandment. And the second, like, namely this Thou shalt love thy neighbor. As thyself, there is none commandment greater than these. Are you hearing me? Love is what wins people. Genuine love, not funny love, hypocrisy love, real love. The Bible says in John 13, How shall they know that you are indeed my disciples? Jesus said in verse 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this, all men, all men will know that you are my disciples. If you have loved one for another. In 1 John 5 and 2, he said, By this we know that we love God, yes. that, that we all love God, children of God, is when we love God, and as Bishop said, we keep his commandments. Yes. He said it anyway. We got to love God. Yes. We got to keep his commandments. His commandments, the Bible says, is not grievous. Yes. What is an ambassador then? Talk to you about an ambassador. Yes. An ambassador is one who is represented yes. country. Right? Yes. And he goes to another country and he represents his country. When you go out there and we ambassadors, we are representing of where? God and where else? Silver Spring. Yes. Yes. This is our country right here, right here. We're the United States, but this is our country. Silver Spring, we are, but when we go out to witness, we're going to represent Silver Spring. We belong to the kingdom of God, right? Well, the Bible said we are the light of the world. Yes. And where will the light lose its saltness? Where will we lose our saltness and where will we lose our light? It said, then Jesus said unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have light of light, the light of life. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, where in which shall it be salted? It is therefore good for nothing, but to be cast out, and to be thrown under the foot of men. Our chapter noon, God told us, go be witnesses. But Acts 2, 9, so go be a witness. I will be empowering you. The gospel is the message everyone needs to hear. The good news. The message of Jesus. We must use whatever platform that God has given us to proclaim the message of Jesus. Whether it be in our homes, whether it be at work, whether it be at church, everywhere. We can, we can and should want to be part of the soon coming 
kingdom of God. We should be praying and asking God, baptize me in the Holy Ghost. We should be asking God, if you are not baptized in the Holy Ghost, remember, there's another power that God wants to give you, to be effective, to be empower you, so that you can go out there and stand and take the take what's given to you. Because if you don't go out with the strength and power of God, you will not make it, people. We will not. We will come on heartbreak and disappointed. Oh, I wasn't able to save anyone. Oh, you got to think I did my part. And as they said, you plant the seed. Somebody else will come and water it. All we know that is God is going to give the increase. Amen? And remember, God said, In Acts 1 and 8, we have a calling to take the gospel to the outermost part of the earth. Amen? Amen. Beloved, we are his hands and feet. And the Holy Spirit is our guide. And he said to us, Lord, I'm with you. Always. Even to the very end of the age. Tell me who is influencing you today. Is it the word of God? Is it the world? Is it Hollywood? What is, what are you, who is influencing you and you about the way you are, the way you dress, the way you be, the way you think, the what you do? Yeah. And he said out to them in Luke 9, all, oh, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. In Revelation 12, 9, 11, it says, And they overcame, meaning us. Him who, the devil, by the blood of the Lord, the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto that. I remember when I was going on vacation, I told you, if you haven't died to yourself, you're not ready to live. We got to die to self. And only then are you ready to live. Amen? Amen. So let's pray. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You, you got to gather your people, oh God, and they sit, oh God, and we learning, oh God, about evangelism and this great calling that you have given us and how you're trying to prepare our hearts, oh God, for this harvest. Sister, kill me, pray every Monday night for revival, for renewal for America. But I say, God, in addition to that, Lord, let a revival start with us. Let a revival start with us. Father, but let it first begin with me. Revival must first start with us individually. We need to be revived. Lord, sanctify me as a worthy vessel. Sanctify me, tell him, sanctify me as a worthy vessel. Anoint me, O oh God. Fill me with your spirit, O oh God. And give me a message, O oh God. Help me to tell the story of how you found me and saved me. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 As we stand to our feet, God bless you. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Come on, clap your hands for 